and maybe one of the most profound and impossible questions in physics. What happened before the Big Bang, the event that led to the formation of the universe? The physicist Professor Sir Roger Penrose thinks he may have an answer, and he's written a new book about it, Cycles of Time. I spoke to him about his theory and asked, what happened before the Big Bang? Well, the idea is that it was what we, we might call a universe like our own. See, what we believe about what we presently call the universe, that is to say, something which started with the Big Bang and is supposed to be going to, into this exponential expansion, which will accelerate its expansion, which will con continue indefinitely. Now, I'm accepting that, but I'm not regarding that as the entire universe. I'm saying this is just one eon, as I'm calling it, of a succession, perhaps an infinite su succession of eons, where the remote future it becomes the Big Bang of the next eon. Now, that's a strange idea to get your mind around. So, we end exactly where we started. Or we, or at least, I shouldn't say we end. We don't actually end, you see. It just keeps going. But, right. it's, but it's a cyclical process. So we have another Big Bang yes. that ends and starts everything over again. That's right, yes. What's different on this scheme? Other people have proposed ideas where the universe sort of turns around and, and collapses again. The trouble with that is to do with the thing called the second law of thermodynamics, which is crucial to the whole discussion. It's a law which tells you, roughly speaking, that things just get more and more random as time goes on. And so if you have a, a cyclical scheme like mine, you have to explain how this can make sense with what's called the entropy, that's the measure of randomness, uh, is increasing all the time. So how can you have a cyclic universe? But the key thing to this is that most of this entropy or randomness goes into black holes. And these black holes eventually disappear through Hawking evaporation. So we've got quite a long time. <laughs> we have indeed. <laughs> Are we ever going to be able to prove this, do you think? Well, it's, you, you, if it's right, it could be proved quite simply. And when I say simply, I mean within the next few years. Because the you can actually, in a certain sense, on this in this game, see back into the previous eon. What you actually see is encounters between huge black holes. You make it sound very easy. I suspect it pro probably isn't. W where are you, given this theory that you're putting forward, where where does it leave you on the question of God? Because as you all know, Professor Wilson <laughs> said, said recently yeah. that as far as he is concerned, God no longer needs to exist, or you know, the world could exist without yes. him. That was not actually a change of mind of Stevens. I've known him for a long time. And he's it's been it's a the very first time he's put it in a science book. In quite so sort of firm a, a way, yeah. I suppose, yes. Well, I, I tend to steer clear of this argument. I'm, I'm not a believer myself. I don't believe in, in, in reli established religions of any kind. I would say I'm an atheist. But uh, I suppose you could say that if there is not a creation moment that uh, tells against God in a certain sense. But I don't really agree with that. And certainly I've talked to people from the Vatican about it, and they were quite happy with this idea that it somehow, in their view, God creates the whole thing. And, it, and God would be outside time and doesn't need a moment to in, in which to create this universe. So I don't think it really uh, addresses this question in a deep sense. It does in a, in a more shallow sense, because it would say, if the theory is right, that there wasn't a moment in which the universe came into being. So in answer to the question, what happened before the Big Bang, you would suggest a previous universe? With the previous, yeah, previous I'm calling it an eon. I would say I'll use the word universe for the whole thing, you see. Right. All the eons, one after the other. And the I would say there's another eon before four hours, which is, seems like what we... And, an, and another one before universe. that, and another one before and that. Indeed, indeed. Going on for infinity. That's perhaps saying a little more than I'm claiming. I'm saying there's one before and one after, uh, and that would go on uh, for quite a bit. Whether it's indefinite is, is a separate issue which one would have to explore. And these universes, do they have the same laws of physics apply? Do this, are they that's similar? A, that's a very good question. You see, there are these puzzles about the constants of nature, and people sort of worry that maybe they're all adjusted so that life could exist and so on. And sort of ideas of multi-universes come up and say, well, maybe the constants are different in these other universes. It does, to some extent, address that, but in a more practical way, in the sense that if we can see into the previous eon, then we might be able to tell whether these constants were the same in the previous eon as they are in ours. And it could be that the laws are the same apart from certain numbers, 
which might take different values. I don't know. Uh, this is a question for exploration. You'd have to look at the equations very carefully to see whether they do allow for at least some of these numbers to change, and that's not clear. Well, Professor Sir Roger Penrose, thank you very much for leading us so gently through that. Thank you.